10 years on, the teenager, now a woman in her mid-twenties, is devastated to hear Paul Bailey's up for parole. It was time to contact the parents of Kylie, Dawn and Bevan Smith, who are just as determined to see him locked up for life. It must have been a big ordeal for her to pick up that phone and ring people she had never even heard of and tell them what she had, or tell us what she had to tell us. I would assume that their first response mentally would have been when I contacted them was if this girl had come forward, Kylie would still be alive. Did you feel some sense of responsibility? That guilt is something that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. I'm still. But with Dawn and Bevan Smith, the three would become firm friends, succeeding in convincing the parole board to keep him inside, for the time being anyway. He's a, a shocking criminal. He's, he, there's no place in any decent society for Paul Bailey. So she'd helped persuade the parole board that the police were still not listening. It was 10 years since she told them Paul Bailey raped her as a child. It was 2001 and she was demanding again to know what's happening with her complaint. It would take nearly a year before the police would write to apologise and say they'd been remiss and the case wasn't going to go any further. A simple apology um, doesn't cut it. How can an apology in a letter and in the same sentence admitting that they were negligent, um, make it okay. In desperation, and at her own expense, she employed a lawyer, Jonathan Eaton. Well, I don't think there was any dispute uh, that she had been badly let down. Uh, the problem was that, from her point of view, the apology that had been given to her on behalf of the police and the regret that had been expressed in terms of the failure to deal with this matter as it should have been dealt with uh, so many years ago uh, wasn't the answer. If the police wouldn't take Bailey to court, Jonathan Eaton and his client would in a private prosecution. Her lawyer wrote to the police telling them of their last resort. It struck me as uh, quite unusual, indeed extraordinary, uh, that when you have such very serious allegations of very serious offending being made, when there are no questions whatsoever about her reliability, her credibility, everybody is accepting she is telling a very compelling uh, and truthful story, uh, that the simple answer wouldn't be to lay the charges and leave it to a court to make the determinations. The letter had the desired effect. Bailey would finally be charged following advice from the Crown Law Office. And the victim would finally have her day in court. I needed to do it for myself. Um, to actually have uh, somebody be accountable for um, the way that my life had been and uh, to be accountable for all the things that I'd lost. The Crown against Paul David Bailey place Paul David Bailey before the court. For the best part of 17 years, she has been carrying an intolerable burden. In short, Mr Bailey... It was vile offending. And Paul David Bailey, serial rapist and murderer, would be forced to look his victim in the eye as she said her piece. For 17 years, I've carried your filth with me. And today, I finally give every last disgusting piece of it back. I wanted him to say that I was more powerful than he ever was. Oh, it was triumphant. Triumphant. Um, it was just... I cried with joy. We've taken the power back as adults, not trembling children. A lot of that fighting strength had come from the Smith family in the memory of their daughter and sister Kylie. Half this battle was fought for them and for Kylie. It was always my backbone, you know, for the life that Kylie never lived, um, the family, the children that she'll never have. Um, you know, that's with me every day. <laughs>